about to leave Already packing Come with me I'm not really asking We'll get away To a place where we don't know Well, hello, Minders. Welcome to another Mind Shot vlog. And I'm at Liberty Bridge today in downtown Greenville, South Carolina. I decided to take the art toolkit out for a spin. And it's just a beautiful day. Been wanting to come down here to the Reedy River Falls, do a little bit of plein air for a long time, and that's what I'm doing. It was a great day, but the spot I picked was a little uncomfortable for me. I'm not really used to this palette yet either. But despite that, and given those factors, I still, I had a great time. Came back, I think, with a pretty usable sketch. I didn't quite get the values the way I wanted them, but this is a pretty common thing with plein air, and I, I always like dealing with a lot of those details and refinements back in the studio anyway. So for me, plein air is always a great time just to get a good basic sketch. Just to get a feel for the colors, the atmosphere, the spatial relationships, as they exist in real time and real space. Oh, and back up to the bridge view, right here is approximately where I was sitting and painting. So I'll finish this up and join me back in the studio for a few refinements with more watercolor and gouache. About to leave, already packing, come with me. I'm not really asking, we'll get away to a place where we don't know. About to see the world in action, what we can be. Life with no distractions, we'll get away. This is what we waited for. All right, so I'm back in the studio with my sketch. And you know, for a quick sketch, it's not that bad. I was not real comfortable where I was sitting. So I kind of was in a hurry. But for a quick sketch, I'm not terribly unhappy with it. And I usually just try to get a basic guide for myself to bring home. And that's what I've done. Now what I'm gonna do is show you how I would fix this or enhance this with gouache. 
or more watercolor. Uh, I'm not happy with several of the values. It's fairly flat. Um, I'm not happy with parts of the water. I want to sort of work on that a little bit. All the values that I need to darken or add darker sort of facets to, I can pretty much still do that with watercolor. And I think I'm going to do that. I might get gouache involved, but I want to simplify and change some of the rock shapes. That's not so much a value thing as a design thing. So I'm going to work on that and just get an overall pleasing value scheme that I like better. This is not what I used in the field, but I'm going to use my Schmincke palette, which is a uh, Schmincke and M. Graham gouache hybrid palette. Schmincke watercolor on this side, gouache on this side, M. Graham gouache. Pre-wet my palette a bit. I'm going to make a dark out of Venetian red and ultramarine blue. That's sort of a violet. This is a picture that I took. Now this is not completely what I painted. I simplified areas and compressed areas. But it'll give me enough of an idea of what I want to do. And I can see right away that I didn't get nearly enough dark values in places. And I'm going to probably add my own interpretation. For instance, in here, I want more highlights on top of these rocks. Um, now, I completely compressed this space here, so I don't even have a lot of this. But I probably will bring in more of this waterfall area and uh, just go through and tweak some of these deep values. In a lot of places the shadows just need to be a little more unified. And I had sort of the right idea in most of what I, I did, but I just need a little more pop, I think. And I, in here there's foliage and that'll be a good opportunity for me to add some highlights to it with gouache. But right now I'm just using watercolor. And I could probably improve a lot of this just by deepening values in the right place and unifying some of the shadows. I want this not to look so jigsaw puzzly and maybe combine some of those rock shapes. And I think I'm going to expand on this foliage here. A lot of time, a lot of places in the shadows the values combine and you don't see any detail. So I like sort of like that effect. You can see that I need more shadow in here. I'm not concerned with the shape of the rocks matching what's in the scene so much as just getting a more convincing value scheme. And these rocks over here are very dark. I think I'm going to darken them considerably and just leave some tops. So I have to use a little bit of sort of invention Now it looks better already. I haven't done much. You know, value is king to getting things to look dimensional and like they are existing in the space that you see. And that's good. I, I don't want to do a lot to this. I don't want to have to do a lot. One of the problems while I was on location was I was varying my shadow color too much. I was using that new uh, pocket palette from Expeditionary Art and I'm not used to it and I should know better than to take something I've never used before into the field because unfamiliarity with a palette or a set of supplies because I mean you, you you build habit into how you use things you know how you mix I didn't have any colors out on the palette mixed I should have taken a little more time to do that I'm also trying to make a few more logical shapes here that some of these weren't working for me as a rock shape. So I'm going to come back on top of this waterfall and add some white. It's easier. Uh, painting water in a waterfall is real hard to do in negative painting. But um, you can do some of it. And I started out negative painting. And I just want a little bit more gaps in how the water falls. 
I've got a photo which is freeze framing the water, so that's helpful too. You know, when it's rushing, you can't always see exactly how you need to, to model that water as it comes over the rocks. I'm using the same shadow color, and that's just going to help me to unify this whole thing in terms of shadow. Just those simple value changes there in the deep shadows is really already helping tremendously. And as I'm negative painting around these rocks, you know, I'm keeping in mind the shape that I want to be left with, the highlight shape on top. That's helping a lot right there too in this water. Just adding a few more broken up deep values. Uh, again, I'm not copying the shape of the rocks that I saw out there. So, you know, I don't have the exact shape to go by. But what I'm doing is looking at the way the light hits and the shape uh, that's left on top of the rocks and determining a characteristic that um, I can copy and sort of be inventive with. If that, if any of that makes sense. This is looking a lot better. Or at least more like what I was wanting it to look like. I'm not going to have to do a lot of, of gouache painting on top of this. Now I'm going to take some lighter values, some lighter washes, and just um, you put in some middle values of those same shadows in places won't be as in shadow but it also is not completely in light. I'll probably add a few warm brown tones in there too. Just gives you a different facet that's a slightly different value and that just helps turn those forms around from light to shadow. Helps you tuck overlapping shapes, helps you tuck one behind another with a little bit of a middle value. This is the really fun part of painting. Well, it's all fun to me, but you start adding these little refinements. I love being able to represent what I've seen or where I've been accurately. I mean, that's the draw for me, I guess. Um, but to do it with economy of brush and to portray a sense of light is just what's exciting to me. I'm really not going to have to do as much to that water as I thought. It's just real helpful having the waterfall frozen, so, sort of, in a photo. Now I can look at the shapes and analyze the shapes. Alright, let's leave that for the moment. I'm going to mix up a gouache red-brown, orange-brown, and sort of, I'm going to fiddle around with some of these rock tops. Just sort of uh, unify a few of them. If you're familiar with gouache, you know it usually, especially light colors, usually dry much darker. It depends on how much water you have versus how much paint. The more water you have, of course, the more it's going to soak in, evaporate, and then your gouache just sort of becomes transparent or translucent. And so I'm just trying to take some of this jigsaw puzzle look out of these rocks. Actually, most of them were pretty big. There weren't that many small ones, but there were a few. I'm going to add some highlights over here too where those had sort of gotten obliterated. Yeah, I'm not going to have to do a whole lot more. Really, I'm not. Alright, I'm going to go in now and fiddle with some of this foliage. This was sort of a center of interest and I really want that to be more distinct and interesting looking than it is. And I'm just starting with some of my lightest values. And I don't need to get carried away with it. This is after all still a sketchbook sketch. But I'm already a lot happier. I've been asked a lot of times to do tutorials on shadows and I'm still trying to figure out how to do that because there's never one way to do a shadow and it's always different with the scene. 
in general, the best advice is the same advice for uh, painting or drawing anything, and that's observation. I like shadows that are a little more analogous. Some people like to make shadows with compliments. I like that. I don't think I'm going to do much more than that. That is, I think, a pretty good improvement to my sketch. I kept this background simple and suggestive. I like that. I'm going to keep that. I'm going to take off this drafting tape here. But I think for the purposes now, I'm just going to stare at it a bit and let this be good. And I know many of you have been to Maria's site, Expeditionary Art, and are enjoying her toolkit. I'm glad you were able to do that. I know she appreciates it. I'm loving the kit. I'm loving the pocket palette. And um, this being my first use, I'm going to get a, a little more familiar with it yet. And have a number of great plein air sessions with it, I'm sure. Thank you for watching, everybody. Thank you so much, patrons, for your sponsorship. For making this channel happen. We'll see everybody in the next video. Bye bye. Be free, be free.